So today we're gonna to meet up with Mike Bennett who does all these crazy cool cutouts. You've probably seen him around town, but he has this show coming up called the Crypto Zoo. And it's like some interactive thing. I don't really know what it is, but we're gonna go inside and check it out. Hello? Hello, we have friends. And like, how's it going? Um, how could I get to you? Uh, if you go around this way. Cool. Awesome. Okay, I think it's this way. How's it going? Good, how are you? Incredibly overwhelmed. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> nice, to nice to meet you. I'm Kyle, this is Chandler. Hey. Yeah, so we got, we've had the keys for like two weeks. We kind of just are rolling with the punches. Today the, the lights are coming in. Oh, It'll be professionally thing. lit, which means we can focus on the things we want to focus on and hide the things we don't want to focus yeah. on. Uh, to explain, he's like maybe four days out from the show, something like that. Seven, exactly okay. seven. It's right. go time. Yeah, so we're doing a soft open on Sunday night okay. just to like make sure nothing falls or whatever. And then Monday we'll be open eight hours a day plus 37 days straight and then, wow, that's and then cool. uh, it goes away forever. Man, this is so much fun. This is so much though. This is, is this yeah. the biggest like project you've worked on? Yeah, and it's really cool. It's like fully become a community thing. Like there's 20 or 30 different volunteers who have come more than once who are helping and it's just like not a me thing specifically awesome. anymore. Are you used to working with like a team of people <laughs> helping you? And stuff? I've always been a team member. Yes. I've never been a great delegator because everything, I'm like, could you, it would be really helpful if you paint this, but only if it's fun. Yeah. <laughs> only if you want to. As soon as you're bored, just stop, it's fine. Yeah. So. I get the sense just from like your art in general, <laughs> it's like lighthearted, fun. Yeah. I, I'm assuming you're kind of a lighthearted, friendly guy. I try to be. Is, is it hard so. to like have to crack the whip right no, now? I mean, you know, if you show up, I assume you want to help and. Yeah, that, that helps me get past that, nice. that wall. <laughs> totally. All right, so show me what you were working on when I came in. Oh yeah, so right now I'm just kind of working on, well, my email's being projected now. Working on getting uh, <laughs> a couple extra props so we can go check out Nate outside. He's actually cutting what I'm sending sure, here. Yeah. So Nate is working on cutting out the sign for our Cabin of Curiosities, which will be the gift shop. We got a thank you sign and everything, so. Hey Nate. That's kind of what, what we're working on today. <laughs> you don't seem like a big rigid to-do list guy. Like you're just bouncing around doing whatever you feel like. <laughs> There's a few folks who volunteer a lot who are like, that is their full-time job. It's uh, just managing uh, people and yeah. like you gotta have a list and you gotta have like a post-it note system. And I have tried. Yeah. I usually write it on like a piece of cardboard that gets thrown away <laughs> by accident, but uh, I have tried. Yeah. And it's it's worked the days I've done it, but you know. I like these little guys. Oh yeah, those are the space penguins. Uh, it's also an alphabet, so. Um, oh. There's 26 cryptids. It's my second set of monsters last Halloween. I made 26 monsters in front of my house. The last display I did was ocean themed and way too many people showed up. So we, my partner and I kind of decided like, hey, maybe uh, we shouldn't do this in front of our house. So I tried to find a building and here we are. <laughs> oh yeah, that's the death worm from Mongolia. So do you give backstories to all of them? We're making plaques for each one that will be hung and every weekday I'll be making a 60 second video about each creature. A lot of effort. <laughs> It's funny because like the leading up to the opening day has been so much work uh -huh. that I've forgotten that we then have 37 straight days of work. What's this one's name? This is the Enfield Horror. So we're standing in like the kind of paranoid cornfields of America right now. Okay. Um, this one comes up a lot. It's pretty haunting. Uh, three legs, you know, just eats cattle. They're all based off of some sort of Some sort story. of legend, myth. Folk tale. Can you give us a little tour of some of the yeah, characters? Yeah, um, this is like one of my favorite rooms, so it's gonna look like the most boring museum entrance ever. Starting, hopefully by the end of today, uh -huh. you'll open this space, oh. and this forest is gonna be here, filling the space, which will then slowly turn into this living room space at the back, 
which features all the characters from last year's alphabet. It's like the Wizard of Oz effect. Right, 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 right. right, right. Color switches. Yeah, so it'll go from boring to not boring pretty quick. This will have a red velvet curtain here mm -hmm. that you'll be able to open. There's gonna be movement with the light. There's gonna be flickering in our old cabin. There's gonna be like phantoms coming up from behind Man, the ghost. This is ship. like I'm in Disneyland or I, something. It's inspired by that. I love that stuff. I love the interactive art concept. I like immersive spaces. How do you avoid like burnout though? Because this seems mm -hmm. like you're just working nonstop. I'm gonna be super honest for this. I, I feel like there is energy that comes from attention. You know, sure. So knowing that actual humans will be walking through this, through this space in a week, and I get to like hear their reactions is really motivating for me. Public promises, yeah, help me avoid burnout. If I say I'm opening a museum on September 20th and I don't, I will lose more sleep than I am now. Yeah, <laughs> I will burn out though. I promise I will burn out. It just might not happen this week. It seems like you just <laughs> really love what you do too. I think I do. So do you have like any? special attachment to any specific characters? Do you have favorites? Oh, well, this one's gonna be interesting. Uh, the Wendigo is like this amazing Canadian Native American legend that is also a deity. And, and I wanted to do it for last year's alphabet. And I had so many people asking me to do it. And so yeah. many people saying, you know, it's cursed. Like, it's like, you can't make art of that. And, like and I'm gonna be delicate. It's bad juju it's, just to I guess, paint it? To say it, to type it. Really? So I'm gonna be really delicate in sharing that story. And I will say, uh, the, this is the second one. The first one completely collapsed on itself. Really? Uh, which was horrifying. <laughs> so we'll see if it stays built. The head is huge, it's back here. Uh, it's getting shaded still, but you know, it's like, it's gonna be pretty close to 10 feet tall. I'm afraid to put it together because it might fall apart again. Um, but an attachment. Uh, I've been doing these slowdown signs lately throughout town that they're just like doing Actually, really well. They're it's everywhere. Kind of become the bread Those and butter. Snails and sloths. Yeah, so I got to. Um, I have two characters this year that are paying homage to some of the slowdown characters. So this is actually like my slowdown snail, but letter L is Luke. I don't know how to pronounce it yet. It's French. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a it's a snail that hangs out in a cave and it's super evil and gigantic. And <laughs> people really feared it in like medieval France. Also, if we go this way, here's here's the first one to go. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's so. I would love to. It's crazy that it actually did. Oh yeah, get cursed. It, it broke in every single spot. I'm doing like a trading card game for this this one, so you can collect all of last year's alphabet. But also for letter Z, this is Zalatar. This is the world turtle. Um, who is also one of the slowdown signs just modified. So <laughs> it's fun. Like those characters have really been a big part of my pandemic. So for my, yeah. you know, so it's nice to see them come back. Yeah, those a slowdown way. signs are on almost every street these days. It's I see them so much. Wild. Yeah, but I so love. So if you didn't guy. recognize those slowdown <laughs> signs, now keep an eye out if you live in Portland, and you'll spot them everywhere. And we'll have them here uh, for sale at the Cabin of Curiosities. Cool. So. <laughs> and then Brian Cook made this pirate ship over here, who's really well known for his series Butts on Stuff, where he just- um, Oh, I actually know that. Yeah, Brian so there, Cook, Brian there is one hidden butt on the pirate ship. Oh, yeah, I do see his <laughs> It's a little, little cannonball in there. That's awesome. <laughs> and I really wanted to take this opportunity to like kind of bring you into as close to a cartoon world as I could. <laughs> Right, so you're kind of walking into this space that feels like you're in a pop-up book a little yeah. bit. It's really amazing what lights and sound and movement can do. You can so. create a whole different world. Yeah, but it, it's never one person. Yeah. Ever. And it seems like you're good at running a team, even if you're I'm not trying. used to it. I try, I, I order pizza every that's, single day. That's good. <laughs> so, like, so, and I'm really trying to tell people to like own what they did, too. And also, because of where we're at, I've been thinking a lot about the folks who aren't comfortable coming inside. Oh, so, yeah, um, just because of COVID? I do free stickers from Sore Thumb every day for the animal of the day. So we have a, a drive through So you can actually, we'll have an A-frame outside and you can like, we'll send a sticker or a pin out to you. everything. Want to come to a bank vault? Yeah, let's check out the <laughs> bank vault. So all the safety deposit box are still, are, are still in here, which is really, really kind of <laughs> wild. I'm making booster packs, like Pokemon cards. Oh, fun. This is kind of cool too. I, Trailhead Coffee asked me to make a coffee with them for October. Yeah. And they needed a label. So I like made this label with these taxidermy heads. Spooky. And then I was like, oh, it'd be cool to make a wall like that. 
And then I was like, where would that wall live? Like a museum. Oh, so these so were like, like digital heads this, and then you turned them well, real? I feel like making this label made me realize like, oh, a museum would be cool. And like, I feel like in a weird way, making this label was uh, That's awesome. the reason that we're standing here right now. Ultimately, for a display like this, I feel like I put a lot of money into it and then people can feel that and they'll buy a shirt as like a thanks for doing what you do. So it does, yeah. you it's spend kind of it promotion. to make it in a way, but also it's so worth it. You yeah, because this <laughs> so. is like a full expression of what you would do if you could do anything probably. 100%. So what like advice would you give someone who's trying to, you know, be a full-time artist like you? Um, like make that switch. I feel like making that switch is like the most intimidating thing, yeah. right? I'm super thankful that I had a partner who was willing to support me through the scarier times, but I'm also super lucky because I didn't know I was making the switch when I started making it. Because oh. I was just like, I, we moved into a house, there was wood in the garage, I borrowed a jigsaw to like break it down for, the, for our tiny car and I realized you could like draw with it. I just didn't know the switch was happening because I had just spent so much time trying to make that happen mm -hmm. that when it actually happened, I was like, wait, what? <laughs> What's going <laughs> on here? So my advice, I guess, would be make space for it. You know, um, if you see an opportunity to shift mediums, uh, I would highly encourage that because it ter certainly fueled the last three years of my life. Yeah, it I sounds never like that was a moment before. that clicked for you. Yeah. Is the cutout. Thing. Yeah, I was doing like exclusively digital and watercolor stuff. Mm -hmm. I had a small apartment mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden I had a little bit of space and I was just like, okay, I guess I should try something else. Cool. And then I did. And now we're at a museum. That's inspiring, <laughs> you know. It's, it's, it's cool. What an what a important moment. But I also was the type of person to like laugh at that. I'm like, I don't want to do any, I, I like what I do. Mm -hmm. like, I don't want to switch and yeah. paint is messy and I don't want to mess with acrylic paint and house paint, that seems gross. Yeah. I don't want to get splinters. <laughs> but then I did and I'm just like, now I wouldn't want to do anything else.